So this is the self-development with tactics. Book. So, this episode is going to be all about self-acceptance and how to accept oneself and what to do about it when you're not just able to accept yourself. I found a pretty good article or a few good articles and we're going to talk about them. But I'm going to see you after the intro, as always. As every day. And I hope the audio is a little bit better. I'm actually having, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can actually see it. I'm actually having a yoga mat in front of me and I guess it is actually doing a pretty good job of just not reflecting anything or it is actually doing a really, really worse job. I'm not quite sure. I'm just noticing myself a little bit of a difference, but I'm not quite sure if it is better, if it is worse. Would be nice if you could tell me, you know, but... Before we even go through the episode, I'm having just got a comment on a YouTube video. Before we go through the episode, um, there's two things, actually three things. It depends on how you think about it. And two to three things that I'm willing to talk about. The first one is if you're willing to listen to this as it would be a podcast because it actually is a podcast, then please hop down into the description. And the first link is going to be to the podcast. It is on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and all the other sites. So please check it out. The second one is the notes, you know, uh, you're going to see a few highlights in this episode and I'm going to highlight or I have highlighted a few parts of the articles that we're going to go through. So just for myself, so that I'm actually having a structure and because I'm putting them all down into a PDF and you can download it and there's the link down in the description. It's totally for free. It is a Google Drive link and everything is safe. Everything is good. You can just download it. It is just good for you. And the last one is add music. If you want to have some background music, then please go down into the description. And there's a playlist with, I think, four to five to six songs. And there you can choose. And there you can then just have background music because it would actually make the experience a little bit better. Or maybe I'm actually having background music added to this already. I'm not quite sure, you know, because I might be editing it in a different way today. But I'm not quite sure about that at this point in time, you know. But yeah, um, so... As you can see on the left side of the screen, we're having a Harvard Health Publishing from the Harvard Medical School article, and it is from 2016, so it is kind of old, kind of old, you know, it's exactly four years old, which is quite something, but I still guess it is a pretty good article, and I still think it is a pretty good article, and it is, as I said, all about self-acceptance, and there's also some tips on how to accept oneself better or more or whatever. So let's start with the article. But yeah, there's a little bit of bullshit on the right side, but you know, I hope it's not disturbing you. So self-acceptance is defined as an individual's acceptance of all of his or her attributes, positive or negative. It includes body acceptance, self-protection from negative criticism, and believing in one's capacities. So it is fairly something, I would say that's quite a huge thing. Like it involves quite a few things, like one's attributes, how one look, and, and all those things like totally is something relatively big, I would say. It's uh, develop your self-esteem in part from others appreciating us, which is kind of the first point, which is kind of the, um, the original thesis behind it, because they are just going forward like it is like self-acceptance is just okay i'm accepting myself i'm accepting my positive and negative treats and or whatever it is called and my flaws and i'm accepting my body and, and all those things but they are just like well it actually comes from self-esteem and often our self-esteem is part of what other people think about us and how we got appreciated people with low self-acceptance may have had parents who lacked empathy during their childhood they going further like okay you know Maybe you had a pretty tough upcoming, you know, or maybe your parents just, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be tough, but maybe your parents weren't just that empathetic, you know. Maybe it is not really about what you think about yourself in the first place, but in the first place it is about what you have been told, you know, your whole childhood long and all those things. They really think it's, it's not really exactly something that develops in us at first, you know. And, and I would say, yes, it makes sense, you know, that it is coming from a place of self-esteem and also from other just places. But this is like one theory. There are mul multiple theories out there. And the self-esteem theory is one of them. There's also like, uh, I think, just mental health in general, uh, a topic and disorders and some shit like that. Not quite sure. But I think in the other, other articles that we're going to go through, it is also a part of it. Still... Consequently, in their adult lives, they may need much strong affirmation from others that most, than most people do. In other words, ordinary levels of approval do not move the needle of their self-esteem or on their self-esteem. And I actually have to say, this is then just coming from a place of 
giving way too much of a fuck about what people think about you. In the end. In the end, it is really about that. In the end, it is really kind of only about what other people think about you. And if you're thinking about it, by not giving a fuck what anybody thinks about you, by being like, well, I know myself. I know who I am and I know what I should be doing. And I also just understand that some people are just having an opinion on me. It is what it is. And I think it is also just something also about understanding things. I think self-acceptance is also about understanding things in terms of like, okay, I understand that I might not be always good. I do understand that I might just make be, might be making some mistakes from time to time. I'm just understanding this, you know? And I think it is just also coming from a place of actually self-esteem. I started thinking about it. I think it's also quite self-esteem in terms of like maybe also understanding oneself, valuing oneself and knowing what to value about somebody or someone or one actually. Of course, self-acceptance or lack thereof does not exist in vacuum. It actually has profound effects on your physical and psychological health. For the reason, it is worth understanding what these effects are and what you can do about it. And then there are Actually, as they also say, they're going to talk about these effects and the effects of having low self-acceptance and all those things, which is pretty interesting. Though I do have to say that it is like somehow strange in the first place that they are going to just talk about such a wide variety of things that are happening or are just done by low self-acceptance and all those things. Like it's, it's pretty interesting, even though it's like... I'm not quite sure about that, you know, but we're going to read it and we're going to have a look at it and we're going to see what not. Without self-acceptance, your psychological well-being can suffer, and often beneficial interventions are less helpful for you than for others with high self-acceptance. For example, practicing mindfulness can help many people reduce their impact of stress, but when you cannot accept yourself, it becomes less effective. And as you can see, they're like, I'm gonna repeat it once again because I think it is a pretty uh, interesting point. For example, practicing mindfulness, which is I think referring to mindfulness meditation, I guess, can help many people reduce their impact of stress or the impact of stress. But when you cannot accept yourself, it becomes less effective. The question now is why? Why is it less effective just only because you're not accepting yourself? I I'm, I'm not quite seeing through that. I'm not just getting it why they think it is. But maybe you do. And therefore I'm pointing it out. But when you can not accept yourself, it becomes less effective. Also, if you have a physical illness such as rheumatoid arthritis or arthritis, I think it's actually arthritis, isn't it? Not accepting yourself can make you more anxious about your body. In this context, your automatic negative thoughts increase. I think in that case, it is more like acceptable or more understandable since it is also about just one's looks and all those things. And also, maybe actually having a problem with accepting it. I think if you're just having self-acceptance or if you're trying to accept oneself, it is also going to be more of, which is going to lead to this point actually, which is more than of like, okay, I accept that I'm having this illness. I'm accepting that and I'm able to live with that just because I'm accepting that. And I think in that sense or in that way, it just also really makes sense. But it is like still kind of strange, at least for me, like it is my opinion is what I think. In addition, if you feel negatively about yourself, the brain regions that help you control emotions and stress have less gray matter than someone with a greater degree of self-acceptance. That is, these regions actually have less tissue to work with. This lack of gray matter may also appear in regions of the brainstem that process stress and anxiety. So as far as I can tell there, they are just actually seeing a correlation between low self-acceptance and anxiety and stress and all these things. I'm actually seeing one with anxiety, with stress not that much, unless you're thinking about like, okay, you're working at something and or working on something, whatever, and you kind of just do not accept that you're so slow. Of course, it's going to stress you out. Of course, you're going to be more stressed out because you do not accept your pace. You do not accept how you're working. But of course, like you can do something about it, which is like, yeah, you know, does it really come from a place of self-acceptance or is it like just, hmm, yeah, it kind of does, you know, but maybe also not just I think acceptance is kind of the, the wrong word there quite often. I kind of feel more of like being happy with something maybe, you know, being happy with the pace that you're having, with the work pace that you're having and all those things. I kind of feel like that happiness would actually be quite good, being happy with whatever it might be, being happy with your physical illnesses. And even though like happiness might be like a step too far because acceptance is before happiness. And I think you do just have to accept it before you can be happy. Maybe. By disrupting the brain regions that control it, and also indirectly by increasing stress signals and your brain that subsequently disrupt these regions. 
which is like okay these things happen just because uh the uh, the the low amount of gray matter might uh, disrupt the brain regions that control certain things like it would be anxiety and 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 so forth and by increasing stress signals in your brain that subsequently disrupt these reasons yeah blah 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 but let's actually talk about how to go about your self acceptance or how to increase your self acceptance and there are three ways as they point out the first one is self regulation the second one is self awareness which they're not really talking about though and the third one is self transcendency self regulation involves suppressing negative emotions i don't like suppressing i don't like that negative emotions i wouldn't also talk about emotions there such as self hatred refocusing on the positive aspects of yourself and reframing negative situations so that you see the opportunities in them for example looking for ways in which negative criticism can help you grow constitutes reframing yes i understand it i wouldn't i wouldn't say so i wouldn't say suppressing negative emotions because suppressing negative emotions is not going to lead to anything good it's not going to be anything good because those negative emotions are really 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 important because if we are kind of neglecting them if we are just trying to not see them um our body is telling us something with those emotions you know it's not like okay they are just really unnecessary and you should just break them you should just throw them away it's not the case it really is not those negative emotions are highly 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 incredibly important and we should not fucking suppress them and we should not fucking kind of neglect them or just look away and do nothing about them we should be working with them because most often it is the case that our body tries to show us something that we're just not able to see without those negative emotions it is just a way of communication of course if it is like well no there's not like no of course like there's no but there like there's no no way it could actually be in a negative way because of course if you're seeing a lot of negative emotions you know that there's something going on and you can understand that there's something going on and you can also see that there's something going on and because of these negative emotions you can be like well why am i having them why am i feeling negative why am i feeling those negative emotions and if you ask yourself that it is one of the best ways and maybe even one of the first ways to do something about those negative emotions and it is like well for example if you're in a public space and you and you feel like well you're feeling cramped up you're feeling not good you're feeling like a little bit suppressed or whatever you might be feeling why are you feeling that is this the case in every single situation you might be in when there's a lot of people yeah might be the answer no might also be another answer but let's go with yes and if you're saying yes to this question that you are telling yourself or asking yourself then just you can work from that from this point on you know you can work from this place on you're going to then just understand and also know and at, le- at least you know it and at least you know it's not about acceptance then um, but you know it and you understand it which leads you to just uh, figuring out a way how to just deal with it and how to just make it better for you probably maybe kind of i don't know but definitely uh, seeing the good things in life and seeing the positive in every single situation is definitely something that's incredibly important i i think like as we as we're just going through that it is really like self acceptance does not really come from a uh, from like self acceptance per se it is not really like an own thing but it really comes from places like giving too much of a fuck about other people's opinions uh, seeing the positive in life and or seeing actually only the negative in life in this case and all those things actually all those things that i'm often talking about and all those things that also stoicism is highly about really really a lot about yeah i've actually seen that uh, while i was going through it on the train however self control may be less powerful than we think the lack of self acceptance can be deeply unconscious that is it uh, that is it can exist at a level beyond our conscious control which means like okay if you are quote unquote suppressing those negative emotions it's not going to do anything you know because it is still in your mind it is still in your subconscious mind when you are self transcendent you rely less on things outside of yourself to define you you rely less on things outside of yourself to define you this by contributing to work family or the community at large um but it's it's not that important as the first one was you rely less on things outside of yourself to define you which is probably also going to be things that you are not in control of which is probably going to feel going to be things like just outside of you your parents their opinion other people's opinions your life in general the situations you have been in and by relying more on yourself and more on your own emotions and your own thoughts about yourself which i think is also a pretty huge part like figuring out when you're just talking negatively and thinking negatively about yourself which is definitely a part of what they have been talking about above there fortunately just like self acceptance self transcendency uh, and changes physical changes in the brain it has been associated with increased serotonin transport availability in the brain stem 
As mentioned earlier, this same region impacts self-acceptance. Transcendental meditation is another potential tool to consider for self-transcendency. It decreases cortisol and reduces your stress response. And now they're actually talking about meditation and meditation being a, a pretty huge tool, as they kind of pointed out, because they're only pointing that out to just do something about your self-acceptance and being able to accept yourself a little bit more. And they are just talking about mindfulness meditation and also loving kindness meditation. Mindfulness meditation, they pointed out just because um, they say like, okay, if you're just doing mindfulness meditation, which is incorporating, which is all about not uh, judging your own opinions, it's going to be about not just seeing your opinions and being like, well, I'm having those negative opinions, you know, these are bad, I shouldn't be having them. No, you're just feeling them, you're just seeing them and you just let them pass by. It is all about just observing yourself and observing your emotions and observing your thoughts as well and not judging them, not interacting with them, but they're going to pass by and you see that they are there, but you're not going to interact with them. They're just there and you are just you, you know, you're just there and they're just there and you have nothing to do with your emotions basically. And I think it is a pretty good way also, as they point out of course, to just really work on your self-acceptance because it is a pretty huge way to just observe what is going on. Okay, I'm feeling this and that, well yeah, it is what it is. I'm seeing this and that, well yeah, it is what it is. I'm feeling like stressed out, yeah, it is what it is, you know, and, and such and, and, and so on. But I also point out uh, the other one. Having more compassion toward yourself appears to be helpful in increasing self-acceptance. Loving kindness meditation can help you achieve this state by changing the activity in regions of the brain that perceive and process emotions. This makes sense as lack of self-acceptance has been associated with excessive right hemisphere activity in the brain. Uh, the only problem that I'm always having with such highly scientific things is that I do not really know if it is just the truth, you know, because I'm not a scientist, I'm not that educated, but I still think that what they have pointed out in this article was, was pretty fine and pretty good. But there's something else that I'm willing to, to talk about. I've unfortunately not been able to highlight anything, and I mean anything, on this article. I don't know why it is happening. I don't know why it is the case, but it is from the psychcentral.com site, I guess. Therapists spill 12 ways to accept yourself. And the first one is set an intention, which is like, why are you willing to accept yourself? I guess, you know, which is like, um, if I set my intention that a life with self-acceptance is far better than a life of self-hatred, then I begin a chain reaction within my being geared to a life of peace, some was said. Uh, which I think also makes sense, you know, if you kind of uh, try to live a certain life, then you're probably also going to live a certain life. Kinda if you are just also acting on it. But I'm not quite sure about this first point. You know, I've, I've, I didn't really understand it the first time I've read it and I'm not understanding it now. Celebrate your strengths, which I think is a pretty huge point. Consider the people around you. Also because considering their thoughts, considering their values, especially if it is about your parents, you know, just thinking about them and seeing if their, um, their way of living is actually kind of in you as well. You know, if you've kind of just adopted that view on the reality, on the world, what should be the case, what should not be the case, what you should be doing, what people should be doing, and all those things. Like figuring these things out and then asking yourself if you are just also like that. I think it is a pretty huge one. Create a support system, and I would say just a, a framework to feel good in. And as they say, surround yourself with people who accept you and believe in you, she said, because it really, really does make a huge difference. The people around you, they're influencing you, you're influencing them. And if you're just influenced by some bullshitty people, then of course, yeah, guess what? You're going to be not in the best mood probably all the time. You're not going to be just high in self-acceptance, high in self-esteem and all those things. The fifth one is forgive yourself, which might be uh, quite difficult for some people and or in some situations for some people, but which might, on the other hand, be something that's quite quite okay and quite understandable and quite easy for, for some other people. The sixth one is shush your inner critic. Um, I would say so as well. The seventh one is grieve the loss of unrealized dreams. The eighth, perform charitable acts, which I'm not... Yeah, I understand it, but I don't know. Realize that acceptance is not resignation. And I don't know what resignation is. That's the problem. Departure, leaving, standing up, blah, 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 blah. An act of resigning from a job. He announced his resignation. Mother described acceptance as letting go of the past and the things we cannot control. This way, you can focus your energy on that, on that which you can control, which is empowering, she said. In fact, for some people, accepting that they have a power is the first step to making positive changes, she said. 
which makes sense. And guess what? Which so philosophy is talking about that so fucking often? Yes, right, Stoicism. Or the Stoic philosophy, you know? I don't even know if Stoicism is like the appropriate kind of way to talk about the philosophy itself, but yeah. The tenth one is speak to your highest self. Martha suggests that readers try the following activity that includes imagining and interacting with your highest or best self. Be kind to yourself, of course, and f no, not gonna re I'm not even gonna read the last one. I'm not even gonna read the last one. You will never know what it is unless you actually click on the link in the description because I'm linking uh, these two articles down in the description. So if you want to check it out, check it out. And yeah, I'd be pretty pumped to see you the next time because this is gonna be the end of the episode. I wish you the best health of happiness and also success and I really hope that you're going to remind yourself and you're going to be remembered which basically means your legacy which basically means just being a good person and then also being remembered as a good person. Three other questions that I'm having for you are why are you here, what are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most. These three are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea but you're going to see you know maybe subscribe to the podcast and to the YouTube channel I would appreciate that and I'm going to see you the next time. I'll see you.